Pastos Biology Topics from the Study Guide To understand what turns the muscle on and off, let's look at figure 8-5. Here's the thin filament with the myosin binding sites. Here is a tropomyosin molecule. Notice it covers up this myosin binding site on the actin molecule. And here is a troponin molecule with its calcium binding site. Now think of troponin as a hinge and tropomyosin as a cover. Now here's what happens. A nerve impulse travels down the axon of a neuron, and you'll understand all of this when we get to the nervous system, and when it reaches the tip of the neuron, a signal molecule is released. This signal molecule is called acetylcholine. It quickly crosses the tiny gap and comes in contact with the muscle cell membrane. So all of this is the cell membrane of the muscle cell. Now this signal molecule causes the muscle cell to set up an impulse. We could call it a muscle cell impulse. Let's just call it an impulse. Now this arrangement of the tip of the neuron and the indention of the muscle cell is the neuromuscular junction. Now this impulse, it's transmitting information. It travels along the plasma membrane of the muscle cell and you'll also understand what that's all about when we get to the nervous system. But the site of action of this signal is deep within the cell. In order for the impulse, that is the information, to get into the cell, it travels down the T-tubule. And when it does so, it reaches the lateral sac. When it reaches the lateral sac, it causes a change in the permeability of the lateral sac, and it allows calcium, which is filled in the lateral sac, to diffuse out into the surrounding cytoplasm of the muscle cell. Now, guess what? The calcium binds to the calcium binding site on the troponin. And when it binds, it causes the tropomyosin to swing away from the binding site on the actin, that is, it uncovers the myosin binding site, and once that happens, the process we just described occurs automatically. Bind, bend, release, bind, bend. So the signal for contraction of a muscle is the nerve impulse that reaches the muscle cell. The impulse causes the release of calcium from the lateral sac. The calcium, notice it's transmitting some information to the troponin molecule, binds to the calcium binding site on the troponin, uncovering the binding site, and the muscle contracts. Now again, keep in mind that this is a highly schematic view. The tropomyosin doesn't swing away quite like this. It changes its configuration just enough to free the myosin binding site. Now after this happens, the muscle has to be turned off. How is the muscle contraction turned off? Well, the calcium has to be removed from the troponin. To do that, calcium is pumped back into the lateral sacs. Because it's a pump, it's an active transport that is an energy requiring process. Notice that muscle contraction, muscle work, is an energy intensive process. It's required to pump calcium back into the lateral sac, it's required to release the cross bridge. It's required to bend the cross bridge. In other words, the whole process requires a lot of ATP.